in the middle of all this, oh, the caucasity, J.K. Rowling decided she was going to throw down. She she she'd been little hints of the yeah. transphobia over the years, but but this week she was masks off everybody, just full on. Somebody, somebody <laughs> ripped open all the turf four cruxes. <laughs> And she was uh, born anew. <laughs> now I do want to point out just before the show went on tonight, Daniel Radcliffe like made this long, eloquent post to the Trevor Project, and it was amazing. And I'm sitting there going, "Wow, this this man is half her age, yeah, and ten times as eloquent." Harry Potter grew up okay. Oh my God, she got so petulant. I mean, J.K. Rowling would had. Had big let me talk to your manager energy going on. Yeah. Just. Oh. So. Yeah. It's it's been a weird week. I I I hope we can stop. Can we stop talking about this? Will she? Won't she? Now she has. We're done. Move on. And then someone decided to hit up Neil Gaiman and be like, "Hey, another British author said a terrible thing. So can you fix it?" And I don't know why you would do that. Especially considering he's his own little ball of internet drama right now. Because yeah. he was in the middle of a very messy possible breakup with a very messy person. Yeah. So he's like, I've actually been not online for months for my own mental health and because I'm in the middle of a messy breakup with a messy person. But um, yeah, trans people are good. <laughs> please, please leave me alone. I mean, that's me just uh, it's the bare minimum. Come on. All right. Like, just because they're from the same little island doesn't mean they really have anything to do with each other. They don't all know each other, okay? Right, that's like people who ask me, who have to tell me that their second cousin has red hair. Yeah, I've seen her at the meetings. <laughs> Alright, let's get the intro going, because we've got a weird collection. Why do I say that? We always have weird collection. We always collection. have a weird collection. That's what we do. That's what we do. It's our oeuvre. Yeah. All right, each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? This week, we're going to start with something a little different for us, and um, I'm actually going to put a little warning here right now. Um, those of you who are watching live, you might want to mute the first part of the segment. I'll, like, do a hand sign when it's cool to come back. Those of you who are on YouTube, you might want to fast forward past this. Not because it's graphic, but because I'm about to play a really annoying noise. Um, I'll, I'll but give I, you... But I have to hear it? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's it's in the... It, you can find it. It's, it's in the link. Um, this past weekend, something weird started happening in San Francisco. This noise... This weird three note dissonant noise. And here's Was what it it's the trumpets of the apocalypse. That's oh, what I, I are you okay? <laughs> I wouldn't blame people for thinking it. Here, I'll, let's, I'm gonna put it on for you. So this is from uh San Diego or San Francisco, sorry. Um San Francisco. I'll, I'll let you here, let's oh, everybody have a listen. The shit out of him. Okay. Everybody have a listen to this. It's terrible, isn't it? It's creepy. Well, what that sound is, um, at the Golden Gate Bridge, they have been doing some renovations. And part of the problem is it's very windy up there. So they've been trying to make a, a buffer, a baffle for the wind to, it'll still pass through, but it won't be like smacking into cars and Did causing they issues. A giant flute? They <laughs> built a giant flute. <laughs> <laughs> Engineering screw up turns Golden Gate Bridge into creepy wind siren. I mean, I guess you'll know when it's windy in San Francisco. So, so what happened was they did not. Okay. 
After work on the Golden Gate Bridge sidewalks to bolster their wind resistance, nearby residents of San Francisco are complaining that a 1.7 mile long structure makes a creepy droning, droning noise when it's windy. Mysterious unsettling tone is heard in videos. Um, it's this. They heard this as far away as across the bay. You know, it's it's like you know, Marvin Gaye sitting on the dock of the. Ee are we sure it's the bridge and not Mothra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, comes in, that comes in August. I mean, it's fucking 2020, guys. <laughs> are we sure it's not Mothra? <laughs> Have they checked? Apparently, I think it couldn't hurt to check. This is this is so, man. I don't know what low bidder they got who did not test this shit. Yeah. Maybe, you could when they designed it. Maybe I know they they probably did like a wind tunnel modeling with 3D, but they probably did not do an actual test. They, they probably did it all modeled on a computer to see yeah. the direction of the wind and how it would spread out. They didn't check the sound it would make. And like the computer's not just going to voluntarily tell you that this will sound like a hellmouth opening in the San Francisco Bay. They're not going to just tell you that. The computer doesn't know that you don't want that. And it's loud too. It is it is it is piercing loud. It hurts the ears when you're when you're on the bridge. It hurts the ears and unbearable. It's that loud. Um, it goes on for hours. It doesn't stop. It, it, it's it depending on how close you get to it. It it's if you're actually on the bridge, it's it's terrible. If you're out across the bay. It's like, ee just constantly. You can do damage to the human body with enough sonic power. Like they have riot dispersing weapons that are just sonic that blow your eardrums out. Yeah. But what LRAD, something like that. I forget the, the abbreviation. So people oh. in San Francisco are going to start fucking mutating. <laughs> That's not how that works there. It's 2020. <laughs> Is anything how anything works anymore? Oh. It's the last year of this world. It's the final season. Nothing matters anymore. Maybe it's that fucking alternate universe. <laughs> you remember in Fringe how both universes vibrated at different frequencies <laughs> and eventually they started damaging each other and they were going to have to destroy one? You, you've got, I, I love how you have a very no, narrow focus of shows you've seen, but the ones you have seen, by God, you have seen them. Yeah. I know them really <laughs> fucking well. I am the master of my little corner of pop culture. So they're, they're going to have to do something about this because I don't know if they can live there. Yeah. Uh, all right. So next up, um, are you, or do you know someone who is gay? Everyone, you home? Everybody, um, because um, they may need a lawyer. Everyone who is gay might need a lawyer because a Nebraska woman is suing all of the gay people. This is a little bit older, but I wanted to bring this one out just because it was charming. Uh, this is from 2015. I don't know how this ever got settled or not. Um, a Nebraska woman is suing every gay person on earth and asking a federal judge to rule on whether homosexuality is a sin. Uh, Sylvia Driscoll, 66, describes herself as an ambassador of God. His son, Jesus Christ, will serve as her own lawyer. Seven page petition written entirely in cursive. Driscoll does not reference any case law, but she does quote the Bible and Webster's Dictionary. Who wants to tell her <laughs> that the court literally cannot rule on whether or not something is a sin? It is so of weird. The whole church and state. It is so thing. weird. This is only from five years ago. It is so weird how much has changed since then, and My how much is still was dismissed because there was nothing the courts could rule on. Exactly, yeah. and it's exactly the same. But just 
Th this was, I, I bring this up because this, this feels like the focal this point. Well, that, and this feels like the focal point of, I want to speak to your manager. This feels like the, where it started. The, the, the drop and the ripples out. You know what the irony is? Hmm. Christians can speak to the manager anytime they want. You're encouraged to talk to Jesus all the damn time. He's just, he doesn't really get back to you promptly. The courts don't work for him. I mean, the last time somebody left something in the suggestion box was like 2,000 years ago, and nobody's heard back on it, so. You got a whole religion out of it. <laughs> it's Dan the Lutheran. Yeah. Uh, but no, I saw Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Ark. They responded. That's <laughs> that suggestion that's... box. Exploded. You don't open the suggestion. <laughs> the suggestions are for God's uh, eyes only. <clears throat> let's, move, let's move it on. This this is uh who among us has not been this next gentleman? Who among us has not has not had a night out of fun and revelry and decided, God damn it, I want to look at the monkeys. <laughs> Drunken Attleboro man broke into zoo because he wanted to quote look at the monkeys it's from Massachusetts. Um, drunken man was arrested earlier this week after police say he broke into the zoo to quote look at the monkeys that live on an island exhibit. Joseph Via, fifty two, was arrested around eleven a.m. on Tuesday. As he walked along a city street after officers found his wallet at the Capron Park Zoo and, and reviewed surveillance video from the night before. Break-in was said to have been discovered by zoo workers arriving for work Tuesday morning uh, via admitted to drinking and breaking into the zoo around 7 p.m. He told the officers when asked what he wanted to accomplish, quote, I was drunk and wanted to go look at the monkeys. I mean... The zoo is not actually home to monkeys. That's... <laughs> but black and white rough lemurs do live on an island that sits in the middle of a pond. I don't... I, well, if I was those lemurs, I'd be very offended, but... Yeah. Um, Which at... means you had as good a chance of seeing monkeys in your own home. <laughs> at one point, Via boarded a small boat and started to paddle out to the island... Via later jumped out of the boat after getting stuck and swam to shore where he allegedly dumped his wet clothes. No animals were harmed and no damage was reported. It, I, I was she the monkeys. I just, oh, monkeys are coming. Like, I am very excited that the Denver Zoo is reopening this week because I've been here three months, hippo. 15 minutes away from a hippo, and I've not been able to see said hippo. Hmm. At no point during quarantine, <laughs> and they're opening with like limited numbers of tickets a day, and it's all a one way, like you can't go back and wander around. You know, they have restrictions. At no point during quarantine did it occur to me that I should just break the fuck in and hang out with that hippo. What well, it's it I am amazed at how active these drunk people are. We have so I many know. of these stories. Where people are like super drunk and they're doing all of these things, this elaborate bullshit. And I'm like, how? Like, I'm not a huge fan of drinking to get drunk because alcohol gives me headaches and nausea. But I've since I've moved to a state where it's legal, I've gotten a little into edibles. <laughs> and let me tell you, I'm not breaking in anywhere. <laughs> no, even when I, I have been blasted drunk many times in my life. I, I, I'm I'm not proud, but I ain't lying neither. I have been drunk. And when I get drunk, I want to sit down. I want to be close to the ground. <laughs> just as in much case. Surface area on the ground as possible. I just to I, try and hold it still. I just, I I you know, it because it. I don't know. Please, please don't buy me a hippo. I don't have a yard anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that would not do well. The time for that was 
live when I was in New Jersey and had half an acre. I don't, I live in a little development now. I don't have a yard. I have nowhere to keep a hippo, unfortunately. And he's, he'd scare me. I, he would scare away the feral cat that I'm feeding and trying to trap to get neutered. But I, I don't, I, when I'm drunk, I don't, the, the whole idea of, hey, let's drink like uh, 12 beers and go hop the fence and right. paddle out to see the monkeys. I'm like, I kind of stopped at the 12 beers. Or I could not do that. Or I could find monkeys on television. That's true. You, We have the internet. If you want to see, I'm pretty sure right now, if you just Google it, monkey live cam. Yeah. There is somewhere on the world that some zoo, some place is pointed a camera 24 seven at a bunch of monkeys. You're done. Kick back. Pop open another cold one. You're done, and you're not going to jail, which is the and best. You don't part. have to leave your wet clothes behind and walk home in presumably your underwear or nothing. And of course, the fortunate part is no animals were harmed and no damage was reported. You lucky, stupid man. This is the look on his face is like, yeah. He's also lucky that lemurs aren't particularly vicious. Mm. Uh, next one is, oh, Jesus Christ, uh, Rochester, uh, uh, um, Rochester, New York. um, so we, white people, and this is, this is only white people. I've, I've never seen anyone who is not a white person have a problem with them. Try to do this. Okay. I thought, you were, I thought that was the end of the yeah, sentence, and I was like, really? I have never <laughs> seen, I have never seen someone who has been a Hispanic person, Asian uh, any other any other ethnic or racial persuasion? I've never seen someone. Only white people try to do this, as far as I've seen. Um, live radio show. It's at what, what was the Kimberly and Beck, and uh, this happened. Ninety five point one fires radio duo for racist comments. During a discussion focused on the attack of a local couple following the recent Black Lives Matter protest in downtown Rochester, Kimberly Ray, one of the local radio duo Kimberly and Beck, referred to the N-word three times during the segment, asking whether the attacks were, quote, N-word-ish and N-wordly. Ray did not actually use the N-word. Quote, okay, let me ask you a question. Were they acting N-word-ish? Why are we so desperate to find a way to express this fucking word? Why? I have like, never... Is it just because someone told you you can't and white people can't handle being told no? I, every, it's, all, it's always they, they want to try to say it directly and everybody's like, oh, no, no, oh. So they're like, okay, what about... Wait a minute. What about if I construct this elaborate way to work around it while it's still expressing the same concept? Also, what does acting N wordish mean? Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? Kimberly. But yeah, I don't know why we desperately need to like. Like, if I'm singing along with a song that has that word in it, I replace it with fellas. Yeah, fair enough. Even if I'm alone in my car. Yeah. Because I, I just don't want to create the habit. Right. Seriously. Yeah. I, I, I this, this is also another uh, thing about um, radio shows in general. I've noticed they kind of go up their own ass. Yeah. They kind of forget that they can't do anything they want and they go up their own ass and they get in trouble. Like, I have heard some terrible ones. Like, you think Howard Stern's bad. This is nothing compared to Bubba the Love Sponge, which that. Oh, no. Oh, no, Tara. Oh, no. Uh oh. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? There you go. 
Are you there? Wait, there it is. Hi. What the hell? I have to edit. I don't know. Out. I don't know what happened there. But I was saying, I've people are all like, "Oh, Howard Stern, what?" You've never heard? Has, have you ever heard Bubba the Love Sponge? Unfortunately, yeah. yes. He was he was the morning guy on a station I listened to when I lived in Connecticut, and Glenn Beck was the morning guy on a station I listened to in Connecticut. We got all the shitheads in Connecticut. Yeah, that 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 was Bubba the Love Sponge definitely goes right up his own ass. Yeah. It it I it, which which always astonishes me because like there are so many people who could do that job and yeah. do it well. And be entertaining and, and not and not go up their own ass. Though upstate New York, though, like pe people that don't live in New York or have never lived in New York think all of New York is Manhattan <laughs> or like they think it's like Manhattan and Long Island. No, it's not. Upstate New York is fucking West Virginia. Kind of. There's fucking people that fly Confederate flags in upstate New York. And I'm like, are you lost? I've, I, Did I, you move here from somewhere? No, I've lived here my whole life. Then upstate New York is a whole other planet, man. I, I got, I got, uh, I got like, um, I spent like a day or two in Buffalo when I was stuck uh, on a layover once back coming to our Com Bravo. Um, oh, apparently, you know, Helios is saying this is their second show. They were fired back oh. in 2014 for something similar. So somebody hired them back. Do radio people, do radio stations not know there are more than like five people on Earth? I mean, to be fair, in Rochester, they might not. <laughs> They they can they can oh, hire New York's a fucking wasteland, man. They can hire more people. Yeah. That time was transphobia. Okay, so they're moving, they're stepping it up. Cool. They're getting to the more relatable. They're working on their greatest hits album. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to find one that'll catch on with kids. N word ish. What the fuck did you think was going? to... Just. Oh. Well, I did say it that's the i'm not touching at you at that point just go ahead yeah seriously if you're gonna do this just go ahead just go ju just get it out of your system because it's not gonna make a difference no nope. that you were precious about it i'm pretty sure people who were list every black person who was listening to that was like no yeah no Pretty much a bunch of, pretty much a bunch of people, but regardless of who they were, was listening to that going, no. Wow, this next one's almost charming in relation to that. This is from Santa Cruz. Um, why does this keep happening? Bless your heart. Man in stolen tractor takes Santa Cruz PD on low speed chase. <laughs> Did they have trouble? Overtaking them? Sunday night, California Highway Patrol officers in Santa Cruz were kept busy after spotting a John Deere tractor on Highway 17. Officers said it was going 15 miles per hour with no lights on. They say the driver refused to pull over and a very low speed pursuit ensued for 10 minutes. <laughs> You can just maybe block the lane in front of him. I don't. It's not like you're blocking traffic. He's holding it up. Like just block that lane. Well, it's a tractor, so the pos very every possibility is if there's somebody who won't stop at a tractor and you try and get in front of them, there's every chance he could maybe drive over your ass. It doesn't look that big though. They got big old tires on them. I mean, look, that tire is almost like half the size of that dude right there. So. I, I just feel like there's some way to stop someone going 15 miles an hour. When the driver stopped, he was arrested for DUI and tractor theft. <clears throat> Why would you, of all the things to steal, of all the options available to you, you go with, I am going to get drunk and tool down the highway on a tractor. <laughs> 
This is what you do if you've played through your version of Grand Theft Auto so many times that you've done everything. <laughs> you just bored and you're like, fuck it, let's see what happens. I got like two achievements I've got to unlock. Give me a second. I, one of them is the tractors. I'll, the tractor. They're, they're, they're the prostitute up there. I gotta pick up in the tractor. Oh my God. Trunk and stuff. How far? So this is Santa Cruz, dude. This is California. This and, and, uh, sir, please stop the farm. <laughs> <laughs> sir, please stop the farm equipment. No, you're gonna yell at me. <laughs> John in the channel. Oh my god. What? What in the name of why? I'm not, I I. What is drunk logic? I don't get it. Oh, there were tractors to steal in GTA San Andreas. Why do you know that? This is like Saints Row 2. I, I just... This can't be a fun vehicle to drive, you know? It's like, it's got a top speed of 15 miles per hour. I feel like everybody thinks something like that would be a fun thing to drive. Just because you've never done it and it's big. Yeah. But then you get in there and it's just driving slowly. Yep. You, you don't you don't need to like people think it's going to be a lot more thrilling than it is a tractor does not need all that speed it's directing the horsepower in different directions i i don't i don't i i don't i son of a bitch i don't get it i'm baffled and we've had a few of these we've, we've had, had people steal like front loaders and excavators bulldozers so many lawnmowers and like where are you gonna hide it <laughs> where are you, are, are you taking it home right like it kind of sticks out i <laughs> with all the things to do when you're drunk fucking bothering monkeys and stealing tractors all right our last one <laughs> What's that sound? That's Loki. Oh, D. <laughs> that is Loki on on the hardwood on on the wood. Let me in. <sighs> okay, Simba so before like was fast asleep and scared <clears throat> the shit out of himself. He's asleep on the floor next to me. I don't know what happened. So last week, um, we had we finished off with the dude. Who stuck a chopstick all the way up his butt? That was terrible. And someone in India said, Hold my beer. And I swear we've dealt with this before, but no, no, it's a new story. I swear. Doctors remove cell phone charging cable from man's urinary bladder. Doctors in India removed a nearly two foot long cell phone charging cable from the urinary bladder of a 30 year old man after saying he misled them into operating on his subject, uh, on his stomach first. Uh, Gwadi based surgeon Dr. Uh, Wulil Islam said in a uh, Facebook post that the man was operating on at Assam Hospital after complaining of stomach aches and reporting he had a history of accidentally ingesting headphones. I'm going to repeat that again. A history of accidentally ingesting headphones. How do um, you... How does that happen? <laughs> Well, the patient's stool was examined uh, and an endoscop endoscopy was conducted, but the cable could not be initially found. I operated him to find nothing in his gastrointestinal tract, but instead discovered a mobile phone charger cord in his urinary bladder. All of you may have guessed the entry point en route. Um, an x-ray confirmed the cable was inserted through the penile urethra. But is have to read that whole sentence. What? Because he's like, you must have guessed where he put it in. <laughs> but just in case you didn't, it entered through his penile urethra to use his urinary bladder. Like, you can probably figure it out, but I'm going to tell you anyway. 
An x-ray confirmed the cable was inserted through the penile urethra, but Islam said the man still insisted he had consumed it orally. Does he think he has a little mouth down there? <laughs> That's not how that works. That's not what that is. Like, does those, his penis talk to him? Those and are... Go, I'm your urethra. Those are two completely different sections of everything. No. And folks, right I mean, now... I suppose it could look like a mouth if you really put some googly eyes on the side. If... If... If you're watching right now, Give me a charging cable. If you mm -hmm. you at home are watching right now and somehow think if you could ingest something and it comes out your dick, no, nope. no, that's. I see, mean, like water. Well, no, well, what happens there is it goes into your stomach, it gets digested, it goes through your bloodstream, then it hits your kidneys, then it gets filtered, then it gets to your bladder. So he would have had to have a phone charger in his bloodstream through also, his... I feel like all that stomach acid would do some damage to it. Yeah. <sighs> and listen, guys, that's not going to make it any bigger. The practice... practice here's something I didn't know. The practice... You can't, you can't charge it. The practice of inserting an object or liquid into the urethra is called urethral sounding. Yep. Mm. And they make things for that. I just, how do you get, how does it get lost for one thing? How do you just shove two feet of cable up yeah. your dick? That takes effort. And lose it. And not just lose it, you got it all the way to the bladder. Yeah. And then you thought you ate it. Or, no, I, what happened here was the dude was desperately hoping that he could get away with saying, no, no, I swallowed it. I wasn't sticking things up my dick. Yeah. he th I guess he thought when you opened him, it's like operation. You open him up and there's like the bread basket, the funny phone. <laughs> oh, there's that phone charger. He'll just, me up and they'll just find it. They'll just find it. You don't just have like a PVC pipe inside you. No. Like, that's not how that's not that's not how you're constructed. People are like, why would yeah, you like, do how did you get both ends up there? Um all the way. He went he, yeah. he lost like, it. That's almost impressive. You gotta respect the effort. How could he get the fat USB end in? It was probably it was either lightning or USB C. You can like you wouldn't believe the things we've seen people shove up their urethras. Like, it'll stretch. Here, this is a US... It'll also tear, but it'll stretch. This is USB-C. It's much smaller, slimmer. It's a compact, it, it plugs in either way, and it, it's the newest connector. So he probably jammed this up his dick. Now, obviously, this doesn't look like it would be comfortable either, but it does look like it would go up there. Yeah, I also that, sincerely doubt that he properly sterilized it. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's what I don't understand. Like people just shoving things inside of themselves that are clearly not sterile. How was that fun? And like, yes, I know that like, you know some things aren't sterile, but like your phone charger is probably disgusting. Oh God, yes. Like, have you seen when they wipe off a phone and put it in a Petri dish? Like, I have not, and I don't think I want to. Awful. It's actually, most phones have more, <clears throat> carry more bacteria than a toilet seat, than a public toilet seat. Your phone is disgusting. Just so you know. You can, however, wipe it down with a Lysol wipe. I just, they make things for this. They do. Specifically designed. Yeah. That would actually be fun. Like now you have a big I hole guess. in you. You probably have a urinary tract infection and you can't charge your phone. Ooh. <laughs> I think that's the least of the problems. <laughs> what have you accomplished today? 
I'm sorry I missed your call. My phone was dead. The charger was up my dick. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. <laughs> oh, I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is um you gotta use the purpose built stuff. Really. You just you just gotta come on. Like, Stop. I know it can be embarrassing to buy it. I don't know how accessible those things are in other countries. Yeah. But just don't shove random things inside your person. For the love of God. Oh, God. Um, and you think after 10 years we wouldn't have to keep saying that. But we do. We've learned there's, there's nothing quite so embarrassing as stealing a vehicle with a top speed of 15 miles per hour. Um, You're going to die in 10 minutes. <laughs> We've learned that no matter how much you work around it, it's it, if it's in the zip code of the N word, yeah. leave it alone. Just just walk away. Maybe also don't assume people act a certain way because of like <clears throat> their ethnicity or skin color. N word is. Just don't be a racist piece of shit. Well, apparently, being a racist piece of shit gets you um, radio shows. Yeah. Tara, have I been doing this wrong? Do I need to be a racist piece of shit? No. Because apparently... It makes people so angry when we're not. Yeah, it does. It really does. I mean, apparently it would help my career if I was a racist piece of shit. No, thank you. Um, We've learned that people are, are surprisingly active when drunk. I don't, I don't get this. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, when I'm drunk, I there I don't want to go very many places. I mean, it depends on like if I'm out dancing drunk, then yes, I will dance. But you're not going on expeditions. No, you're not, I'm not going on like a fucking Indiana Jones adventure. You're not you're not guzzling like a, a quart of vodka and then deciding you're going to play Dora the fucking Explorer. No. Um, it's that nice little flashback to the time that a lady tried to sue all the gay people. So that was, that was fun. And finally we learned you need to test your engineering <laughs> yeah. in a real world situation because otherwise you could potentially summon demons. Yeah. And listen, if the fucking July wedge on the 2020 quarter quill is demons because of your shitty engineers, <laughs> if you just open up the Pacific Rift and kaiju come flying out of the bay. And you can, and you can bet your ass that's not covered in the contract. So they ain't yeah. fixing it. That's not on anybody's insurance. Nope. And John Boyega's pissed off. He's not going to save us. 